Okay, so hello and welcome back. And today we'll be talking about the Texas Zephyr, which was the premier train of the Colorado and Southern, which was a railway that connected Denver to Dallas with through service to Houston over the Burlington Rock Island Railroad in Texas. This is going to be the last of the Denver-centric videos, and after this we'll be moving to videos centered around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In this video we will be talking about... Hold on... We will be talking about how the Colorado and Southern came together, some of the early trains that ran the route between Denver and Fort Worth, and a little bit about Texas laws, and then on into the present day. So starting off, um, this is the route between Denver and Fort Worth, at least. Uh, just showing it as um, the map, this is uh, something I got from a Colorado and Southern um, schedule, which has errors from copy pasting it because <laughs> let's just leave that there but anyways uh, this is the route that the texas zephyr ended up taking as well as the predecessor trains and we'll just move on from there anyways starting off with the colorado and southern it was created by bringing multiple railroads together the first two were the cheyenne and northern railroad which was chartered to build a north from cheyenne to the northern pacific in montana the, this railway eventually fell into the orbit of the Union Pacific, but they were lost um, through the Union Pacific's bankruptcy due to the Panic of 1893 and its um, reorganization thereafter. This is the point where the Colorado and Southern was formed to connect with the CB&Q in Wyoming and eventually stretched all the way to Texaline, New Mexico. At this point in its history, the Colorado and Southern was mostly carrying the products of mines in the Rockies around the area of Golden and Denver and on down the front range in general. While this is an interesting history, you know, I'm, it doesn't entirely pertain to the passenger trains, so I will just briefly um, mention that the most interesting thing about the Colorado and Southern at this point in its history was that it had a narrow gauge division, and the narrow gauge lines were all dismantled or sold off between 1910 and 1943. So the next uh, subsidiary, or company rather, that carried the Texas Zephyr was the Fort Worth and Denver Railroad that extended from Texline to Dallas. This railroad was a bit more interesting than the CNS in my opinion. It was chartered by the state of Texas in 1873, but the financial panic that hit later in the year stalled construction for at least eight years, and it wasn't until 1881 that construction started, and by 1888, it had reached what is now Folsom, New Mexico, where it met with the Colorado and Southern's, uh, one of its predecessor railroads. And the Colorado and Southern proper wasn't formed until 1898, by the way, uh, by a man named Frank Trumbull. And it was bought by the CB&Q in, in 1908. And in 1899, the CNS bought the Fort Worth and Denver. Uh, this has to do with Texas state laws, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um... But the two companies ran independently of each other until the 1980s. Um, at this time, Texas state law required that any railroad operating in Texas be headquartered in Texas. And the outcome of this was that national railroads would have um, wholly owned subsidiaries in Texas. And the CB&Q um, had the Fort Worth and Denver through the um, Chicago and not the Chicago and Southern, the Colorado and Southern. And then the Burlington Rock Island Railway, which was the joint line between those two railways between Dallas and Houston. I will also note at this time, the um, a lot of states also partially regulated railroads. It wasn't really until the 80s and 90s that that more or less stopped being a thing. So, um, yeah, we'll just, just leave that one there. The main change came as far as uh, the passenger trains go was that in 1925, the Fort Worth and Denver got trackage rights over the Rock Island to Dallas, which enabled the train from Denver to transfer you know, to Houston, or at least the people to transfer to Houston, rather. And one thing I will note um, is that there wasn't through car service between Denver and Houston at any point in this railroad's history. According to the sources I found online, the number of people that would transfer between the Texas Zephyr and trains to Houston wouldn't even fill up a coach, let alone a sleeping car. And before we move on to the Texas Zephyr itself, we have to mention the tradition, you know, as is tradition on this channel, the railways, the trains that predate the one that we're talking about in the video. 
The train that predated the Texas Zephyr was called the Colorado Special, and as mentioned, it was a heavyweight train that ran between Denver and Fort Worth before the launch of the Zephyr itself, and did basically everything Accessor would do, just with older equipment and a steam, you know, steam engines, heavyweights, that sort of thing. I also say, as is tradition on this channel, because there, for whatever reason, tends to be less information on these sorts of trains than there do, these streamline era trains. So other than maybe they existing or seeing a reference to them on an old schedule, you really, there's not a lot of information. So I kind of just mentioned that, yeah, they probably existed, and if I could figure out approximately when they started, I mentioned that, but yeah, other than it carried heavyweight cars, probably some Pullmans and some coaches, and probably mail cars as well, that, that's pretty basically all I would know about it. So the Texas Zephyr was launched in August of 1940 and was a very distant extension of the Hill Empire. As mentioned, the Texas Zephyr ran from Denver to Fort Worth over the Colorado and Southern and the Fort Worth and Denver, which were subsidiaries of the CB&Q, which is part of Hill's um, empire. The Zephyr was different than the ones that came before it, though. It consisted of streamlined coaches and heavyweight sleepers when it was initially created. The other Zephyrs until this point were run as fully articulated train sets built by Bud. And at the time, Pullman was still refusing to serve Bud-built cars, and the cb and didn't want to patronize this monopoly, and was also one of the companies involved in the, um, what's it called, the court case against Pullman. So Pullman largely only served Pullman-built cars, and some of the trains with butt equipment were served as well, but this was like begrudgingly as far as I can tell. So anyways, this version of the train had a mail car, baggage car combo, another baggage car with a crew dorm and a few seats, a couple of chair cars, a dinette, three heavyweight sleepers, and a diner lounge. In some ways, seeing trains like this... Um, launched were a symbol of a lot to towns along the route that the depression was coming to a close but since this was 1940 we we know that like we know now what actually ended the depression for people back then but it wasn't coming the way they thought it would other features of this train include its schedule which was 18 hours between denver and dallas and an interesting thing to note was that this route was extended to dallas after gaining trackage rights over the rock island this also allowed the train, you know, again, to have its direct connection to trains to Houston, which was um, the Sam Houston Zephyr. And um, that train will be covered in a future video as well. And uh, the, the cross-platform, you know, transfer essentially. And uh, let me just kick it over to the next picture of uh, the Zephyrs in station. No idea if this is in Denver or in Fort Worth or Dallas. I'm not entirely sure based on the angle what station this is. So just grain of salt there. But anyways, the trains having the cross-platform connection to Houston just kind of shows how rare of a connection this was even before flights would have taken their toll on railroad traffic. And um, I also will note that Denver was a significantly smaller city at this time. It's not, it wasn't as a, uh, prominent as it was now. So now we're getting into the end of the Denver Zephyr itself, or the Denver Zephyr, Texas Zephyr, excuse me. The Texas Zephyr would, wouldn't remain a train with bad hand-me-down equipment. It did get a little bit of an upgrade in 1957. This is when the Denver Zephyr was re-equipped with for its final time, and its train sets were kicked down to the Texas Zephyr. They were far more luxurious and modern compared to the dated equipment they replaced, even though these train sets were built during the Depression. These sets brought in modern sleeping accommodations, better dining facilities, and other better public spaces. Although newer equipment um, and limited highway connections wouldn't save the Texas effort forever. In 1965, they were sent to Denver for storage. And at this point, the train was basically just handed surplus equipment from the Pullman Pull and the cb and generally. And this is the state the train would stay in for two years. And the Texas Zephyr was eventually slated for cancellation, cancellation on September 10th, 1967, when it lost its mail contract. And this is also one of the many trains that were lost between 1967 and 1969 due to the loss of the mail contracts, which were a backdoor subsidy for the railroads. You know, and other trains were lost during this time, like the Shoshone in the, one of the previous videos, um, the Lark in California, the Chief, 
I think I honestly I think like most of the Rock Island routes were lost in between these ensuing three years. And from what I can tell through doing research on these videos, upwards of a third of the trains that were running in 1965 were gone by 1969 due to the loss of the mail contracts. And presently there are no plans to uh, revive service between Denver and Dallas on Amtrak. You know, see my issues with the 2035 video and other ideas that I have. So they'll be linked somewhere, hopefully. Probably not. So anyways, this is the end of the series on old passenger train videos that ran in and around Denver. The next videos will be those around Dallas, Fort Worth, and that part of Texas. So I hope you will enjoy. And the next one, I believe, will be the Texas Chief. So, yeah, we'll be getting back in on that. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.